as a newly appointed civil judge in Madhya Pradesh, you are entrusted with the immense responsibility of delivering justice. A crucial aspect of this role is writing clear, well-reasoned judgments. Your judgments are not just decisions. They are powerful instruments that directly impact the lives of the parties involved. A well-written judgment reflects fairness, impartiality, and a deep understanding of the law. This guide will take you through the essential elements of a well-structured judgment, providing a practical framework for your decision-making process. Remember, your goal is to ensure that justice is not only done, but is also seen to be done. By adhering to a structured format and employing clear language, you can ensure your judgments are easily understood by all parties involved. Every judgment begins with a clear and concise title. This title acts as the case's identifier, containing essential information at a glance. Include the name of the court where the case is being heard, the specific case number assigned, and the names of the parties involved, the plaintiff, who initiated the suit, and the defendant, against whom the suit is filed. Following the title, provide a brief introduction to the case. This section should clearly state the judgment's date, your name as the presiding judge, and the suit's nature. For example, Mention whether it's a civil suit for recovery of money, a property dispute, or a family matter. Keep this section concise, providing a clear snapshot of the case's background. The next section delves into the heart of the dispute. Here, you will summarize the pleadings submitted by both sides. Begin by outlining the plaintiff's claims, the basis on which they have filed the suit, and the relief they seek from the court. Then, present the defendant's response to these claims, highlighting their counter-arguments and any defenses raised. The key is to present a balanced and neutral summary, avoiding any personal opinions or biases. Stick to the facts and arguments as presented by the parties involved. Section 4. Identifying the core issues framed. With the claims and counterclaims laid out, you need to identify the core issues that the court needs to decide on. These are the central questions that, once answered, will determine the outcome of the case. Frame these issues concisely and clearly, ensuring they are specific to the facts and arguments presented in the pleadings. For instance, in a property dispute, an issue might be whether the plaintiff has established their rightful ownership of the disputed property. Section 5. Weighing the Evidence Evidence Presented This section focuses on the evidence presented by both sides during the trial. This includes oral testimonies given by witnesses and any documentary evidence submitted, such as contracts, agreements, or medical records. Summarize the key points of each piece of evidence and its relevance to the issues framed. Maintain objectivity in your presentation, avoiding any evaluation or judgment on the evidence's credibility at this stage. Your goal is to provide a clear and factual account of what was presented during the trial. Section 6. Analyzing the issues, findings on each issue. Now you delve into the heart of your judgment, analyzing each issue framed based on the evidence presented. This section demands a thorough examination of the evidence, applying relevant legal principles and precedents. Discuss the credibility of witnesses, the weight attached to different types of evidence, and any inconsistencies or contradictions. For each issue, arrive at a specific finding based on your analysis. Support your findings with sound reasoning, explaining why you reached a particular conclusion. This demonstrates a logical thought process and ensures transparency in your decision-making.